Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing all of you budding doctors and nurses how to check blood pressure using a manual blood pressure machine. So let's get inside and get pumping. But where did the blood pressure machine even come from? Well, the sphygmomomometer was actually invented back in the 1800s. Now this went through a few changes until 1905, a Russian physician named Nikolo Korokov actually discovered the Korokov sounds, which was the diastolic sounds. And that is what we use today when we're pumping up our blood pressure machine. We have a look for those two sounds that I'll be demonstrating with you today. There are three main different types of blood pressure monitors. You may have seen in a traditional GP practice, one that folds up and it has a mercury manometer or a blood pressure reading. Those ones are quite old fashioned and they've been superseded by these newer versions, such as the digital meter, which you just press the button and you're off, and the aneroid meter, which is the one I'll be demonstrating today, which means you have to pump it up. Bear in mind that both these two different blood pressure monitors do require regular calibration. So if you are using them, you do need to calibrate them on a regular basis. But Dr. Nora, how do we even do the blood pressure? How do I use this pumping up machine? Well, for this part, I'm gonna need a model. <gasps> model here. Thank you so much, Mr. Model. So we're gonna be using today the aneroid meter. So this one, as you know, you can check out my video previously. This is very simple. You just put it around the upper arm of the patient and off you go, you press the button and you're done. So this is your aneroid meter. And as you can see, there is a dial that is usually attached to a wall and it's connected to a cuff and it has a pump that you can pump over like so. Before we get started, it's really important to choose the correct cuff size for your patient. So you don't wanna to go too small and you don't wanna to go too large because this will give you inaccurate reading. So make sure you're choosing correct cuff size for your patient. For this patient, I'm using an adult size cuff. Next up, we need to ask the patient to expose their upper arm. Do you mind exposing your upper arm for me? Obviously, sometimes patients may not always be wearing the most appropriate clothing. You may be able to slip out their arm from their shirt or even just to undress them slightly. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. That's great. So making sure that your patient is nice and comfortable and they've rested for a little while, they're not too tense or too anxious and always ensuring that their feet aren't crossed over because if they do cross their legs over, they do actually get a higher blood pressure reading. And now to place the cuff over the upper arm. If you have a look at your cuff, you'll actually see that there is a marker for where the artery should lie. Now, when we look at the elbow, this is called the antecubital fossa, and medial to this is a brachial artery. This is the artery that corresponds to the cuff where you should be aligning it. And it's this artery that we listen to with our stethoscopes to have listened to those correct cough sounds that we're gonna hear very shortly. All right, so placing the arm like so. So the artery is in line with the brachial artery. And now wrapping it around, so it's nice and comfortable. And asking the patient to relax their arm. This then gives you some space so that you can place your stethoscope in the antecubital fossa so you can have a look for the tapping noise that you're gonna hear when you're inflating that blood pressure cuff. Before you get started, you always need to make sure that the valve on the pumping device is actually closed because if it's open and you're pumping, you're not gonna get any air into the cuff. So always make sure that the valve is closed by twisting it until it's locking into place. And you can always test it out to see if it's pumping up. Yeah, it's pumping up. So I'm gonna deflate it now just to get ready for the actual blood pressure monitor. How much do we inflate by? Well, if I know this patient, and I've seen this patient before, and I know roughly their blood pressure, I'll inflate by an extra 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. If this patient is not known to me and I don't know what their normal blood pressure is, I'll go up to about 160 to 180 on the dial, and then I'll count down and see exactly where their blood pressure lies. Next up, you need to get your stethoscope. And for this, we'll be using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, which is the larger side of your stethoscope. So make sure if you need to turn it, you've turned it around. Placing your stethoscope into your ears so that they're going into the eardrum. And then placing the diaphragm over the antecubital fossa, like so. And now it's time to inflate the cuff. So for this patient, I know that roughly he sits around 120, so I'm gonna go up to 150 millimeters of mercury during my inflation. Just relax for me. So now I'm up to 150, and I'm gonna very slowly release the gauge by two to three millimeters of mercury, 
slowly and having a listen to those tapping noises, which are otherwise known as the Korotchkov noises. The first time that you hear those clicking noises or those tapping noises actually corresponds to your systolic pressure. Now for this patient, I made a mental note that this was at 90. Then you have listened to this tapping noise and eventually you'll see once you're deflating the cuff, it actually starts to become a lot fainter. As soon as those noises have gone away, that is your diastolic noise. So for this patient, it was 50. Those are known as the Korotkov sounds, which is when you hear the tapping noise initially and you follow it through whilst you're deflating. And once it stops, that's when you record your diastolic pressure. So for this patient, I know that he's got a blood pressure of 90 over 50. Is that good? It's quite low. Have you had anything to eat today? I'm fasting. That's probably why. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is just show you guys again how to do that just one more time, making sure the valve is closed, putting the stethoscope into the ears, diaphragm onto the anticubital fossa over the brachial artery, inflating up, and slowly releasing with the valve turned and listening out for the first noises, which are the systolic pressure. Lovely, I can hear that at 90 and I'm going to continue listening until it fades away. Perfect which is 63. And once you can't hear that anymore, just deflate the cuff all the way and remove your cuff. Make a note of the pressure and then you can record it into the patient's file. So there you have it. Thank you so much for being my patient today. You've You're got welcome, a, doctor. You've got a good blood pressure. I would just recommend you to have something to drink because you are a bit on the low side. You may be feeling dizzy. But doctor, yes. it's Ramadan. I'm fasting. <laughs> That is a very good thing to always bear in mind that if your patients are fasting, they may have a lower blood pressure than normal. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Ooh, this is my abs exercises, my bicep exercises for today.